To some, Skyfall is the 23rd movie in the Eon series of James Bond films, 26th if you count non-Eon films. But throughout watching this film, I was constantly reminded that it is not. It is the third film in a new series which started with Casino Royale and continued with Quantum of Solace. This Bond has never tangled with Spectre, never married, never got any gadgets from Q or hit on a Miss Money Penny, never went up against Ernst Stavro Blofeld, never drove a car underwater, and thankfully never fucked Grace Jones. Why do I bring this up? Because the very identity of Skyfall as a Bond film is of a new series beginning. Yes, I said beginning. The impression I started to get halfway through the film was that Casino and Quantum were lead-ups to this film, prequels if you will. Now, make no mistake, there is no threaded narrative here. Quantum of Solace was somewhat of an anomaly. It was a direct sequel that continued a story that had started with the previous film. And while people will tell you that you don't need to have watched those two films to watch Skyfall, I'm here to tell you that you do. Not because of any loose threads. The story within Skyfall is self-contained, but it's here where this new series rounds out sort of an opening trilogy. If Casino Royale was the origin of James Bond as a double-O agent and his first mission with this title, and Quantum of Solace was about the identity of Bond himself and his motivations, Skyfall is about the series as a whole. It closes out a makeshift trilogy, not of story, but of theme, and gives Eon Productions a fresh slate to work with. As the old series died and the new one was reborn from its ashes, the themes in Skyfall are death and rebirth, and how we must embrace the new school while keeping the old school alive. Throughout the film, Bond and M are both challenged constantly with the fact that they are aging. M is questioned by the government for being an outdated mentality, and her department is ineffective. And Bond, after going through a catastrophic injury in the beginning of the film, is encouraged to give up field work and either take a desk job or retire. As one character tells him, there's no shame in having lost a step. The shame is in denying it. In the beginning of the movie, a terrorist agent has stolen a list of every undercover NATO agent embedded in terrorist organizations around the world, and Bonds and another agent are after him. M orders this other agent to take an unclean sniper shot at the bad guy who is tussling with Bond on top of a train. Unfortunately, the bullet strikes Bond instead, and he falls seemingly to his death. But he turns up later after MI6 has been attacked and the headquarters destroyed. Bond goes through several tests to return to active duty and fails them all. A mixture of his shaken confidence, aging body, and injuries have put him off his game, not to mention his increasing drinking. M fudges the data to get Bond back on active duty and sends Bond after the unknown villain who has decoded the list and is slowly releasing the names of the agents, which is getting many of them killed in the field. The villain is a Mr. Silva, a former MI6 agent who has a serious revenge fantasy against M, and orchestrates a fairly brilliant scheme to get into MI6 and get access to M so he can take his revenge out on her. When I first saw the trailer for this film, I was somewhat reminded of The Man with the Golden Gun. Not the movie, but the book. In that book, Bond was believed dead, but returns and is sent after a Hispanic assassin who is said to be his equal. Well, there's some of that in here, but... I found Skyfall to be much more influenced by the Dark Knight. The villain, Silva, played by Javier Bardem, reminded me a bit of the Joker in his mannerisms, his simple use of disguises, and the way that he purposefully gets captured to further his master plan. I also like the new Q, played by Ben Weishaw, who looks barely old enough to shave, but is a great counterpart to Bond and goes with the theme of old school and new school united. What we take from this film is that while espionage may seem hopelessly outdated and inefficient when most of the work can be done with computers and infinite more safety, sometimes the old ways are the best ways and you need a big blunt instrument like Bond to get the job done. There's been a lot of buzz about Skyfall being the best Bond film yet, and that's a judgment that I'm not quite ready to make. I think it has to first stand the test of time before it can be proclaimed the best of them. But is it among the best? Absolutely. I feel quite comfortable lumping Skyfall with my other favorites, such as From Russia with Love, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and Goldeneye. The film feels fresh and modern, and takes influence from newer films while retaining the classic Bond feel, and giving us a Bond that is not a superhero to whom everything comes effortlessly, but rather a tough man with quick wits who is good at what he does, which if you read the books, is exactly what Ian Fleming had envisioned. Skyfall gets a 10 out of 10. Highly recommended.